Hello everyone, it is Justice and welcome to my space. Today we're going to be addressing some comments from my last video, doing a Techo Kaigi. Part of that will be moving into a new Traveler's Notebook cover, and we'll also be talking about a blog post written for the Bullet Journal blog about autism and bullet journaling. Before we get into the big part of today's chatting, I just wanted to say that while I don't have any sponsors, this is literally only episode two, I do happen to have an Atlas Stationers affiliate code. So if you happen to be in the need for some fountain pen things or some stationary things that may be on the Atlas Stationers website, then please feel welcome and encouraged to use the discount code JUSTICE10, that is just us 10 spelled just like my first name, for 10% off of most things on the website. It's not everything, but it's a lot of them. And I do get kickback just as full disclosure, I absolutely do benefit from that, but wanted to include it. This is also in the description of pretty much every single video. Now, let's get right into it. As far as feedback, I got a number of lovely comments on my last video that I want to say thank you for, but a couple of them I did want to shout out a bit. One of them is a comment from Steve. Um, Steve comments on my videos fairly often, so I want to say one thank you to hi. <laughs> but Steve was asking, or not really asking, but stating that it's a little bit shocking that I don't have a Binu pen just yet. And I honestly really love Binu. They are so gaudy in just the right way that I just know that there is going to be some type of pen that comes out eventually that's perfect for me like glitter everything. I want it to be like pink and aggressive. And honestly, Banu should make a Barbie pen. Wait, why was... They should make some type of Barbie themed pen because I can guarantee it will probably sell out. Like why haven't they done that? Do some type of pink with tons of pink sparkle, then give it a rose gold or some type of pinky colored hardware. Oh, that's going to be insane. Benio, please contact me. We could work together. <laughs> but um, he was also saying that he has a pen from them called Armenian Cranberry? Arme no, Armenian Pomegranate. That's what it was. And I'll put a picture of it up here. That is a gorgeous pen. Honestly, very good taste. I also want to... Shout out to Serial Nana. We're mutuals and she's been posting a lot of videos recently. One of the most recent being pens that I own and I've never inked before. I thought that that was a very interesting video title as someone who has zero impulse control and inks a pen as soon as I get it, essentially. <laughs> so I was watching that and I was like, oh man, I can't imagine having these and not having inked them babies up yet. But I definitely do encourage you to go over to your channel and take a look because I feel like we make fairly similar content. And while we're at it, um, two other channels that I've been watching a lot this week are Trina O'Gorman and Girl and Quill. Girl and Quill is a classic. I have loved Girl and Quill's content for such a long time. And it's some of my comfort content, so I'll throw on a playlist and just listen to it in the background. Um, Maybe check her out if you haven't seen Anna's content. It's very nice, very relaxing, very vintagey. And as for Trina O'Gorman, I followed Trina on Instagram and now she makes YouTube videos. She's a university professor and she goes through a lot of journaling topics like journaling and grief or like going through her old journals and telling stories. And I think that it's honestly very interesting. So two more content creators if you wanted to take a look. Now, as we get into actual topics, I really want to go ahead and talk about the blog post article written by Brittany Luckham for Ryder Carroll's bullet journal blog. <laughs> um, before I get into the TLDR of everything, I also want to note that this article was not written specifically for the bullet journal blog. It appeared on two other blogs, Hacking the Bujo for Autistics and the Autistics Bullet Journal. But essentially, I saw this article come in through my email because I'm subscribed to the mailing list and I was like, 
interesting. I too am autistic and tend to use bullet journaling. Let's see what we can learn here. And a lot of it wasn't necessarily learning new things or anything that I didn't already know or do, but more of a re-solidifying that the bullet journal system was made for everyone. Like the entire concept of the bullet journal is to look at your life, dissect your life and see what you need, what you want, what you like, honestly. And so the author for this article was talking about how she was specifically, or rather, I don't know their pronouns. They were specifically looking for planners for autism, uh, planners for autistic people, and nothing really came up quite right, but they did run into the Ryder Carroll system as it's really good for people with ADHD. Um, as for myself, I tend to kind of rotate between things as far as my needs at the time. So I have a lot of different planner systems that I will fluidly rotate through within my planner books. Um, so sometimes I will jot down memory keeping a lot more because I find it more important to remember things. Or sometimes I use it as a second brain for that very reason. Or my brain's actually doing all right, so I just need to write down appointments. Or my brain is really not doing great this week, so I need to time block every hour. It really fluctuates depending on my needs during the week. And I kind of wanted to reiterate that to everyone else because I know that especially around the middle of the year when all of the planner sales start and people start uploading their Techo Kaigis and there's a lot of FOMO going around that we kind of want to change things up, shake things up. You don't really need to buy things to do that. You can just change up your system in the same book. Like, no one has control over you. You make your own rules. Do it. And that's kind of the beauty that I got from this article. It was literally just look at your life specifically, your needs, and adjust. I thought that that was really wonderful. I'll link the blog post below. There's not anything, like, super earth-shattering in it, but it's a good reminder, you know? And I want to get on that topic of like halfway through the year and talk about what I'm using. I know that I made a video earlier in the year talking about the planners that I'm using for 2023. Let's see if we're still doing something similar. So I keep looking down at my lovely handy dandy notebook. I've removed it from its little cover just for ease of use. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to put it in so that you can see exactly what this looks like. This is an A5 Stalogy. It is from Yoseka Stationery. Um, and I have it in an A5 Zip Folio from Galen Leather. This is in the Crazy Horse Brown. When I open it up, I have some Kira Rich highlighters here. These are all glittery. They're my favorite. I have a little clip. I usually have a couple pens here, but I have them out and you'll see why. And then my actual book. This is my second brain. Right now it goes everywhere with me. And I feel like I almost always have some type of system where I can just jot notes and not have to think about it, you know? So that is that. <laughs> In addition, I am still using my A6 Hobonichi. I have this in the Going Merry leather case for it. It has a little back pocket and it's like a tri-open case. So it's not like the standard Hobonichi ones where they look like this and they have the pen loop and open. But it looks like this and I also purchased the one piece Hobonichi Techo and I would like to say I find it very upsetting that there was not an option to just buy these together. I had to end up with two Hobonichis, <laughs> which wasn't really the end of the world because I am using this A6 for work. And so anything work related just goes in here. It is strictly pen and paper so I can keep track of things mm -hmm. and nothing fun and fulfilling planner wise, you know, it's just a planner for functionality. I will say these do look really cute together. <laughs> but I am using them. And the, not the last item because I still have like one kind of throw in, but my last regular item is my traveler's notebook. 
I was using the Starbucks Reserve Roastery Edition for most of the year, and today we're going to kind of swap it over to something else, and I'd love for you to help me. In here, I have a Galen Leather Wallet Insert. This is in brown, and it has darkened over the years. I keep things like stamps in the f here. <laughs> And as far as my inserts, which I'm going to go ahead and just take them out since we're swapping covers anyway, I have the Vertical Weekly, and this is the brand new July through December insert, so there's literally nothing in here, as well as an undated monthly, which I've dated myself. I was debating too long as to whether I wanted the monthly insert or not, and they sold out, so I had to go through and just date it myself. And so that you can see... Here is the brand new vertical, and here is the one that I've filled already. <laughs> I have like let it get so chunky with ephemera and stuff and pictures and Polaroids, and honestly, I am so happy with it. I'd also like to say these two frog stickers were gifts, and I don't know what about me says I just love a big round frog, but I kind of do, and I'm loving it. So if anyone wants to bestow upon me more big fat frog stickers, I'll take them. <laughs> And as far as covers, I was kind of debating bef you, between a few. So I could use my Traveler's Diner cover. I could also use this um, Olive Edition back whenever they were first released. This was sent to me by my lovely friend Inlay. So I wanted to say thank you. Or should I use my Traveler's Factory Kyoto? So I was debating between these three for a while and they're all very different vibes. But I used Danny, my husband, as a tiebreaker, and he chose this one. So we're doing this for the rest of summer, maybe into fall. And for this, I don't have any bookmark charms, and I also only have this leather charm here. And I think that that's going to be good for me, because one thing that was really irritating me is how loud these two brass charms are. Because a lot of the tables that I work on are glass top. And I'm not really scared about the scratching, but oh my gosh, the noise is awful. And so I was kind of averse to bringing out my journal and using it on tables because I just didn't want to have the awful earth shattering noise of brass hitting glass. So I think this will be nice to just be a little bit softer. So got this in here, moving this little bookmark. And we are sliding in our Galen Leather Wallet insert. So it looks like this so far. And for this vertical weekly, I already have a band put into it, so I'll just slide the monthly right back in. And I don't know about you, I used to be someone who wants my monthly first and then my weekly, but I think that I prefer weekly first right now, only because I flip to that much more frequently. So I'm sliding, Oop, that was loud, I'm sorry. I'm slipping that in. And so we look about like this right now. So it's pretty thin, I haven't bulked anything out just yet, and I'm pretty happy with it. Part of me kind of wants to put an insert in there, but at the same time, there's not really a purpose because I already have my A5, that's my second brain. So I'm just going to leave it like this, and this is going to be my traveler's notebook moving more towards the year. <laughs> Golly, that was so awkward. One of these days I'm going to get better at talking fluidly, and you're going to have to bear with me until I get there. And now, a satisfying little stack. Here we are. Here's everything that I'm using. <laughs> it's honestly a lot. And yes, I do carry all of these with me whenever I go back and forth to work. I have to carry a separate tote bag because I'm obsessive. But let me show you the tote bag because it's really cute. This is from um, Good Postage in North Carolina, back from whenever we were honeymooning. And look, oh my gosh. Good Postage honestly has really good tote bags. I am a tote bag girl. And 
you can see here there's like a watercolor boop 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 kaveco boop 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 this is a karen dosh we have black wing this is another kaveco i want to say this is the pencil shape this is the kaveco original i want to say and then i don't know what these are these are just generic pencils and things but i thought it was really cool that they did sketches of like brands and things that i recognize and for the last little thing i'm i remember saying that there was one more little journal i do have this this is a passport size with the the camel traveler's records cover i also have a couple charms on here a little pen clip and on the inside i have a yellow traveler's company um or rather traveler's factory like fabric wallet case holder pocket <laughs> and then i also have the yellow i want to say construction paper insert and i have a sticker here from kiera tattoo of demon slayer what is the crybaby's name again oh my gosh i'm never going to remember his name i just know that he's like the useless crybaby character i do enjoy him but just look on it <laughs> And then back to the other side. I thought it was really sweet to get these two matching together. But essentially the purpose of this is to be my on-the-go emergency journal. And by that I mean whenever I'm going out. So whether I'm going on a walk, if I'm going skating, or if I'm just going out with my friends or family and I have like a small purse because we're going on an outing, I have to have something with me. I have to have like an emotional support notebook of some kind so that one, if I learn something I, I cannot forget, like I need to write this down, I can put it there. Or if I get struck by inspiration and I wanna draw, then it can be there. Or if I just feel really uncomfortable and I need to have something that makes me feel better, holding this really helps me just because the fabric, or it's not fabric, the leather is downy and suede and so it's quite soft, it's very nice tactile. And the record here also spins and so it can be a fidget. So this itself, it doesn't get written in very much, which is honestly great because it means I don't have to buy a lot of passport inserts. But it's something that I don't think I want to be without, you know, it's, it's my crutch. I need it. I love it. <laughs> and so that is also a part of my pile, but this does not get used very regularly, only whenever I have limited storage capacity on an outing. Cool. <laughs> Ooh, I wanted to go through my currently inked. So I have six pens currently inked right now. Ideally it would be three because I really wanna follow the Drew Brown three pen system just to be easy in life. But alas, I am a person that cannot make up their mind and so I'm just gonna to have to live with that. So the very first pen that I currently have inked is my Pilot Vanishing Point Decimo in Extra Fine. This is in the champagne colorway. I currently have it inked with Platinum Carbon Black. This is kind of my everything pen. If I want to watercolor over a drawing, if I want to highlight over something later, if I just want to no must, no fuss, have something to where I can click and not keep track of a cap, that is this pen. This is my workhorse pen. I'd also like to note that whenever I first bought this, I was very gentle and delicate with it. I don't think that there's even a scrape or anything on this pen, but this happens. I don't know if that's normal but you can like, <laughs> you can see whenever it opens to let the nib out. And you can also see all of the crusty little platinum carbon black barnacles I have on here. But it, it kind of goes right back on, so I'm not worried about it. Don't know if that's normal. But because it does that, I kind of don't care if I drop it because it's already just a little bit wonky, so it can do whatever I want it to. Additionally, I also have these two pen sleeves of items. This are both from Goulet Pens. And while I'm here, I may as well get the rest of the flock. Look at all these babies. I'm a collector. <laughs> these are all rickshaw exclusives with Goulet Pens. And I'm kind of obsessed with them. But we're not going to get into that. I feel like I talk about my rickshaw sleeves a lot because they just bring me so much happiness. Like, specifically this one, it really reminds me of Link to the Past because of all of the icons. And I wanted to bring that up because Tangent and the Goulet Pen 
in the Goulet pen cast last week. So whenever this video goes up, they're going to have another video out most likely. Um, but last week, Drew mentioned that he will not be finishing Link to the Past. And I just wanted to gloat a little bit because that's one of the very few games that I did finish. I will say I read a lot of walkthroughs online because I am that person. I'm not going to be able to figure out a puzzle on my own. And it did require some friends help, but I did it. And it's one of the like five games that I've ever finished in my entire life. And I absolutely agree. It was so hard. I don't know how whenever this game came out on the Super Nintendo, how literally anyone completed it because it does not hold your hand. I do not understand it. I do not play Legend of Zelda games for that reason. Um, I'm going to say this just to be crass and silly, but like I'm a little bit too dumb. <laughs> I just will not be able to figure that out. I do not have a puzzling mind and it's really not fun for me to just go through walkthroughs and then finish a game. So I may as well just watch someone else play it on YouTube. You know, I'm just not someone who is capable or rather who enjoys I am entirely capable, it's just not enjoyable for me to have a hard puzzle game where I get mad. <laughs> so, I'm starting with this case here. This is Retro 51 X Rickshaw and offered by Goulet Pens. And it's got dragons and dice and fun D&D little things on it. I have two Kaveco metal pens here. I have the bronze sport and the brass sport. These two are little buddies, they go <laughs> And in these, the bronze sport has a broad nib and I have Irishizuku Shinryoku in it, which is a green color. I also, in this brass sport, have Noodler's Lexington Gray. In here, I have the Sailor X Line Friends brown pen and this is inked with, shocker, a brown ink. I have Irishizuku Yamaguri inked into it and that is a fine nib. Next, I have my Sailor Christmas Pudding. This one has a medium nib. This one was also purchased on my honeymoon at Mininger's. That one is currently inked with Irishizuku Kujaku to get a little summery peacock feel out of a Christmas pen. And last but not least, I have the Pilot Justice 95 and it is currently inked with Irishizuku Murasaki Shikibu. <laughs> So those are what I currently have. I haven't changed it up since last week, but a lot of my pens are starting to run out of ink, which means we get to have an update soon, you know? And I did swatch everything so that I can show you. We're just gonna hope and pray that everything is in, oop, in frame in somewhat of a way. And I'm gonna move this around so that we can maybe get lucky. Yeah. Cool. <sighs> this episode, um, I had a lot happen in my life this week, so there's not a super ton of stationary updates just because life happens sometimes. And girl, let me tell you, um, my washing machine exploded, my husband's car exploded, I had guests this weekend, and it's just been like a wild mental health week. So we're just going to get into some anecdotes. <laughs> So we're going to start off with my washing machine after I plug in my laptop and make sure it doesn't die. All right, all right, all right, all right. So my washing machine. <laughs> so for those of you who have your own washing machines, please clean out the filters regularly, like monthly, especially if you have pets, just clean out your filters monthly. I keep forgetting. And so I have no idea how many months buildup it was before I did this, but I, I just knew it was going to be bad at least a little bit. Um, so I put like a giant glass casserole dish like on the floor beside the little emptying hose and filter area for my front loading washer and fully expecting to like, okay, well, I will have to like go to the sink and drain this multiple times. It's probably been a little bit. It's probably going to be a little bit gross. I did not anticipate the horrors that I would see that day. <laughs> so yes, I had to empty the little drain a lot, but what really got me was the filter. So we have cats as well as a dog. We have long hair, or at least I do. And um, there's a lot of hair in there, but because there was a lot of hair in there and I hadn't emptied the drain in a good little bit, whenever I removed the filter, it was just like, a whooshing, whooshing, a whooshing of uh, 
nasty ick water all over my laundry room floor. Uh, it took me like five towels of throwing them on the floor, hoping that I can sop it up to get it all off. And of course it's like from the filter, so it's all Narnar water. It could have been something to where if I kept up on it for every month, just emptying out regularly doing all of this, then it could just be 10 minutes maybe of maintenance on that thing. And instead it turned into like an afternoon of just why, why have I done this to myself? So just a reminder, please uh, clean out your washing machines regularly. <laughs> also for your dryer, please clean out the drains for the like lint regularly, including the one that goes into your wall and like outside. Just make sure that that thing's empty maybe twice a year. We are all here for protecting your investments and also your time. <laughs> Now the car, the car was not something like that where it's just like, oh, I've been procrastinating this and now it's awful. Danny and I were going to the pharmacy to pick up a prescription. And while we were waiting through the drive through line, we were noticing that the temperature gauge for the engine of the vehicle was normal for a while, but then it started rising. And we're not there for very long, but it's going up very quickly. And then we get the alert from the car where it has the little lit up icon like your engine is too hot warning and between the time that we noticed it getting hotter and that it had probably been like three to five minutes at the absolute most so we get out of the line park stop the car and our coolant is boiling out of our hood just love it just love it so that was also fun had to get the car towed to a dealership luckily a friend was nearby and was able to pick us up and take us home while the car was at the dealership and that was a really cute bill that was a real cute bill <laughs> and uh yeah that takes a lot of time because also we are located in like the rural part of Florida. And so we're an hour away from any dealership of any kind. We're like in the center of where all of the dealerships are around. And so whenever we were on the phone with the insurance tow truck folks, they're just like, oh, well, what's the closest dealership? And so we told them and they're just like, that's like almost 50 miles away. Are you sure there's not one closer? And we're just like, yeah, absolutely positive. I'm mad about it. You're mad about it. This is just how life is. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> But along with some great things that happened this weekend, because with good, there is bad. With bad, there is good. You know, life's all about the balancing act. We had some two very good friends over. I don't want to say their names just in case they're not super comfortable with having their lives out on the internet. But we are talking about starting up a new Dungeons and Dragons campaign. And this time it's going to be pirate themed. We are also toying with the idea of Twitch streaming our sessions. Uh, my husband, he actually is a Twitch streamer part-time. He does a lot of like Overwatch that we play together as well as Diablo. And his username is Sixcrits. So if we end up doing D&D &D on Twitch, then I will absolutely do everything in my power to tell you guys about it and remind you guys about it. But if you did want to check out my husband, I'm also linking his channel and stuff below. But we did that. We also played a little bit of Dominion. If you're unfamiliar, Dominion's kind of like a board game card game. And the concept of it is like resource management to see who can get the most property. We bought the Prosperity Expansion Pack because this is one of those games where you do not use the entire game every single time you play it. You're supposed to use a certain number of like decks that you add into the game to make every single game a little bit different which I honestly love about a lot of board games. Like I love Dominion for that reason. And I also love Betrayal on the House on the Hill for that reason, because I do not want to spend $60 on a board game that I can learn strategies to. And then once I learn that, I just automatically win. It's just not fun to me. I want to change it up every single time I play. And this is one of those games. So you have to change your strategy every time you play because there could be cards that like curse you or cards to where you have to really think about how they work with other cards in order to like get a combo off, you know? <laughs> Sounds super nerdy, but I just wanted to say that because it was really fun and I love spending time with my friends. We got so distracted playing games that I was planning on grilling for dinner. And at like 9 p.m. we end our games and we're just like, 
So cooking dinner will take a long time and we're all hangry now. Can we just go to Publix and get some sub sandwiches? <laughs> and you know what? That's exactly what we did. <laughs> and other than some lovely friends coming over, I also rewatched Castle in the Sky. Um, Castle in the Sky is a Studio Ghibli movie. It's quite an old one, honestly. And I was kind of just looking for a comfort movie to watch. My usual Ghibli comfort movie is like Spirited Away or Kiki's Delivery Service. And I was really feeling Kiki's Delivery Service. But I also saw Castle in the Sky right next to it on my streaming service. So I was thinking about it and I was like, I don't know, the little girl from Castle in the Sky at the end of the movie looks a lot like Kiki. And I haven't watched it in a while, so I genuinely have no idea what the plot's like. So we may as well just start over again. It really resonated with me this time around. Whenever I watched it as a kid, it was kind of just like, meh, meh, boring. It's slow storytelling. There's not really much for me to appreciate as someone with a short attention span. And as an adult rewatching it, I was like, oh, everything's like really intentional. A lot of this storytelling, a lot of this pacing is so that you as a viewer can have certain emotions resonate within you or so that you can have time to think about certain concepts that were brought up. And a lot of the theming around this movie is like, re we must respect the earth, we must return to the earth. And that's exemplified from the very beginning opening scene where the protagonist little girl f falls out of an airship. And as she starts falling towards the earth, fun, 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 she ends up in a mine. And in a mining town, these people that work intimately <laughs> with the earth and even find herself running away from big bads and fi finding solace and solitude in the mines with old uncle, I want to say his name is Uncle Palm, but I honestly can't remember, who teaches them how to listen to the earth and to hear the ethereum around them. Also, as a side note, I thought it was hilarious whenever they were talking about ethereum being the super rare crystal and how in the mines it's quite rare to find pure ethereum because all I could think about in my head was like crypto bros and mining Ethereum because I used to mine Ethereum before they changed it. And I was just like, whoever, whoever did this, did they name it after Castle in the Sky? Did they really? <laughs> but that was, that was a really good rewatch. I'm so glad that I got to see it again. Now this weekend, as like a little preview, I'm not going to be recording anything of it just because it's with my whole family, but we might be going on a boat this weekend with my sister and my like gaggle of little nephews. And I'm so excited. I, I don't think I've been on a boat in a very long time. I don't think I've been out to the beach at all this summer to like actually play in the beach. I go there a lot for work to take pictures and videos and things, but I don't go there for enjoyment quite often so it's it's gonna be exciting we're expecting some rain this weekend so i'm hoping that the rain subsides or at least misses the little spot where we're at but i'm really excited i'm thinking about making some cookies or a cookie cake for my nephews but we'll see anyways i am justice and this has been my space i would love to have your week's updates and thank you so much for spending some time with me i'm hoping that we can all have fun together, just gossip about some stupid life things and catch up, you know. Anyways, I hope you have a good one. Bye.